Hello, everybody, and welcome to the second episode of The Lehman Chronicles. Now, if you're tuning in for the first time, I recommend listening to the first episode. We'll be here waiting when you come back. A bit of a recap of what happened in the last episode. My mom, who lives on a ranch outside of Wildwood, has been experiencing some strange goings on and I'm a bit skeptical if they're really anything at all, if it's just a series of coincidences. Some of the things that she's been seeing is she caught a picture on her game camera of what appears to be some sort of ghostly figure. She has also been getting chills and our one dog has been laying in the forest and barking some unknown location off into the distance. And I have so much to tell you in this episode about things that I have learned. At my job working at the museum in Hinton, I actually did a presentation on Saturday called What's in a Name? And it was all about how places in the Northern Rockies region got their name, the origins of those names. And one of those places is called Cash Perquette. The story behind Cash Perquette is this, that in the mid-1800s, there was an Aboriginal tribe there that contracted smallpox. Smallpox was a absolutely devastating disease to the Aboriginal people of this continent. Their bodies would burn up and they would be completely covered in these puscules and the only relief that these poor people would experience is if they plunged their bodies into the cool waters of a lake or a stream, which is what they were trying to do at Hardesty Creek near Hinton. Now, a few members of the tribe were not afflicted by smallpox and they were sent to the fort, the location in Lac St. Anne, which was the closest that had medical supplies and also food because the tribe was unable to bring in enough food for the sick and the dying. So these few brave men went off down the Yellowhead Trail to get to Lac St. Anne and it's recorded that they went through the Dirt Lake area. And I'm not sure if many of you know this, but Dirt Lake was later named Buffalo Chip Lake and eventually Chip Lake, which is what we call the lake that is just north of my parents' ranch. In one recollection, this group of Aboriginal men made a camp just south of Dirt Lake and the men were there for a couple of days and in this time a few of the members had started to show the signs of smallpox and they decided to move their camp to the side of a small creek and they left a few of their members there at this creek and they continued on to Lac St. Anne. On the return journey back, the members that had made it to Lac St. Anne and came back to the smaller camp near Chip Lake, or Dirt Lake at the time, had found the members they had left behind were dead. They had died of starvation and smallpox 
Many of them had thrusted their bodies into the cold water of the creek. So the members continued on their journey to Cash Perquette to deliver the rest of the medicine to those people there. And they were all dead too. Again, they had thrown their bodies into the creek, in Hardesty Creek, to cool off their, their wounds, their body that was burning up. What I think is really interesting about this is that the location that they described in those journals about this, them traveling through the, the area, the property that my parents live on is just south of Chip Lake, has a creek flowing through it. Maybe it was the place that those Aboriginal people died. There isn't a lot of creeks on the south side of Chip Lake. If you look at the map, you'll you'll only see the one, really. Uh, and it doesn't even have a name, that creek. It's very small and it's spring-fed. And I, I wonder, I really do wonder, if somewhere on that creek, on my parents' property, this horrific, tragic event happened and we've never known about it. It's been lost to history. And because of my job now, I've just been able to uncover it. it it's, it's beyond crazy. It's such an unusual, such an unusual coincidence. That's really all I can say about it. So, not long after I had done this research for my job, I got an email from my mom. And I'm just going to read it out for you guys right now because it's pretty crazy. I have some very interesting news for you, Maddie. You know my friend, Jenna? I reply, yes. Well, she sent the picture from the game camera to a friend who then sent the picture to a, to a psychic in Montana. And, and aside from this, I'm not too keen on the whole psychic thing. However, the research that I gathered makes what this person says eerily interesting. My mom says that the psychic says, she said that there is a village or tribe on my mom's property and they don't know that they are dead. The psychic also says that my family needs to call on Archangel Michael and Gabriel to take care of it. To take care of these poor souls that are trapped in this limbo between worlds. The psychic can talk to one of the aboriginals. The aboriginal that we caught on the camera that obviously is has more energy to portray itself in that light. The psychic has told them that Chief White Eagle is waiting for him. The psychic said that the man is pointing in the direction of where the tribe used to be and that they died of starvation. I'm not sure. The thing is with this, and I've really been trying to wrap my head around it, I just got the information about the Aboriginals from Cash Perquette. I was just able to find that. And it was through weeks and weeks of research that I was able to figure out 
that yes, there was Aboriginals at Cash Per Cat and that they had traveled through here to Lac St. Anne and stopped somewhere at Chip Lake to make a camp. This is, it's not something that you can just look up on the internet. And, you know, the, I'm not sure to call on Archangel Michael and Gabriel to take care of it. I don't know. I don't know what that is. I, <sighs> Gailey, the psychic, she also said that there are 25 or more than 25 souls that had died at this smaller camp around my, my family's place. And my research, from what I understand, it was a smaller group, about 15 people still isn't far off it's very interesting again I'm not I'm not making this stuff up I I kind of almost wish that I was because this is almost getting a little too eerie for me now all of this all of this research and what the psychic Gailey said has brought me to this one point. In the audio clip of Me in the Woods from last episode, it gets all distorted and you hear what sounds like a man's voice. And then there is a small trail, an animal trail to my, well, I guess to the north. And I replayed it over and over and over again. And it wasn't in any language that I understood. But then it got me thinking. These aboriginals that came through this area were Cree. And maybe they were speaking Cree? So I started again to play it out and it sounds like Nakuta. Nakuta. I looked up that word, Nakuta, and it is a Cree word, and it means leave it, leave it, leave what? I really have to stress that I wrote down that word that I heard, Nakuta, on a piece of paper. I typed exactly how I wrote it on the piece of paper into a Cree translator. And it came out, leave it. I wasn't searching through the dictionary trying to find a word that sounded close to what I had heard. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't imagining and perceiving the word as what I wanted it to be. It was really important to me. <sighs> Leave it. Leave what? Gailey, the psychic from Montana, she said that people were peaceful and that we shouldn't be worried about them. And they just need to pass on. 
leave what? Or this could all just be a whole bunch of coincidences. I'm gonna take another trip out to my parents' place and maybe I can figure out some more answers there. Let's hope. Hey guys, so I'm just on my way driving to my family's farm, just by Wildwood there. Uh, much to my fiance's and my mom's dismay, I've decided that I'm gonna go and do another investigation in the woods and they're actually kind of afraid this time for me because my mom caught a cougar on camera. The dogs had treed this rather large cougar in a tree and it was pretty crazy. Uh, you should check it out on her Facebook page. It, He is right there. Um, I'm gonna take some spray just in case. Uh, Again, I don't really want the dogs coming with me uh, just because they're really loud and it might kind of disrupt what I'm doing. I'm not going um, during the dark this time. I'm kind of going during dusk, so I'll still be able to see uh, what I'm doing. I'm going right after work, actually. So what I'm trying to do this time uh, is recreate, attempt to recreate what my mom caught on her game camera. Uh, I've gotten a couple emails from people claiming that obviously it was XYZ um, and why I could think it was anything else and that I really didn't try hard enough to prove them wrong. So. That's what I'm going to be doing this time around. Uh, yeah, going through the steps of if I put a leaf in front of the camera, what happens? If I walk in front of the camera, what happens? Just creating a bunch of different variables and, and we'll see uh, if we can recreate that image. So stay tuned. Okay, so it's dusk. It's not too dark. It's pretty freaking cold out here though. Holy cow. Um, I do have a flashlight with me. And I'm at the place where the game camera took that shot. I wish I didn't hear what this the, that lady the psychic had to say i'm getting goosebumps just standing here <laughs> and it's not the cold i'm just thinking about the things that i heard but i am here to try to recreate the image that i saw on the game camera and so the first test i'm going to do is to put the leaf, a leaf in front of the, the camera as if a leaf had fallen from a tree. So I'm gonna simulate this a couple of times. I'm also going to do a smudge on the glass to see if that makes a difference. I also have some stupid dollar store plastic bugs that are for Halloween that I'm going to kind of throw past the camera to see if that it was a bug that flew by that caused that. Um, I'm going to walk across the camera a couple of times slow and fast uh, 
to see if any of these things change at all, if they line up with what the game camera saw. I guess we'll find out. Okay, so I just reviewed all of my pictures. I think I took, the game camera took about 50 pictures out here. <sighs> and it's getting really dark and really freaking cold. Uh, but none of these pictures remotely copy what I saw. what my mom captured on the game camera. Uh, I don't know what to tell you guys. It's peculiar. I'm going to head back to my parents' place and I need to um, drive back home. I got work tomorrow, so yeah, I can't be out here anymore. And honestly, all of this stuff is kind of it's stressing me out, you know. I got so much work for the Halloween festival coming up. It's only like a week away and we have so much to do. And, you know, we're getting, you know, stressed about this story that's unfolding before us. Anyways, I'll... I'll get back to you guys. Okay, I'm heading home now. And this is... Yeah, the probably the last I'm going to do for a bit anyways on this. I don't know what is happening. And my mom is getting concerned and I think what I'm doing is making her her more concerned this isn't helping her it was supposed to be something where I would debunk it all and voila it's solved and it's okay mom and now it's turned into this shit show seriously of, I don't even know. But, um, yeah, I, uh, oh my God. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> Is anybody there? Come on. Oh my god. I gotta go.
The Lehman Chronicles is a presentation brought to you by the Lehman Exchange. I hope to see you all at our Halloween festival that is starting October 15th and runs Saturdays and Sundays 12 to 8 p.m. until Halloween. Thank you for tuning in and please be sure to share this podcast with your friends.